everybody, Deborah Lynn here in the studio. I hope you guys are all doing well. I've been in the studio here warming up, getting ready for you guys. So there is a little mess around me. So forgive me for that. I've got my um, uh, Fabriano Artistico here paper. And this is a 140 pound cold press. And today we're gonna be doing Dauphinions. This one is done on a uh, 300 pound rough. You can see the texture when the dry, you had a dry, dry brushed there and you get that texture. So that was done on 300 pound and natural white. And then this one was done on Fabriano. So we're gonna do another Fabriano. Okay, I do like this on this paper but I'm getting low on it, so I gotta order more. Um, as far as paper, uh, go ahead and buy whatever brand that you can get at a good price, but make sure you use 100% cotton paper. Anytime uh, you use anything that's pulp paper, if you're just learning, you are doing yourself the biggest disservice that you can get. If you're using something like Strathmore, okay? This is gonna puddle up and make a mess. You're gonna have a muddy mess. So you're wondering, God, I'm using all these different papers. They're all pulp paper, but I'm just getting, I'm just not getting anywhere. I'm struggling and I can't, I can't do this because it's just not working. It's probably because it's your paper. You have gotta use 100% cotton paper. So look for the most affordable one. This one, Hanabula, let me show it to you. Let me grab my pad here, I see it. Hanamula This is a this is 100% cotton paper 9 by 12 in the United States you're talking 20 bucks for 12 sheets. That is really really affordable. Uh, or you can buy 10 huge sheets, cut them down to all different kinds of shapes um, and spend probably $130, $40. I don't know where it is right now price-wise, uh, but go to cheapjoes.com. They got really great prices. Uh, the paper, well, that was some painting that went wrong, um, but the paper is, it's really nice. It's much like Fabriano. So I really like this Hanamula. This is really affordable for when I'm gonna do smaller paintings or I just wanna play around. That's a good one. Um, but for everything that I like to do, I used to like to use the Saunders Waterford and the Fabriano. Okay, so today I'm gonna be using a Escada brush number 12, okay? This one has a nice tip to it. So it gives me the precision that I need. My hands are full of pigments because I loaded all my pans and I've been playing. So forgive me for my stained hands. Um, this is a David Taylor, okay? This is came in a set. I love this brush. It's my new favorite brush, okay? David Taylor, you created a really cool brush. So I'll be using other ones that I bought and I'll talk to you about those as I use them. Um, I'll also be getting in and using my liner. I do that for making my spider webs that I make in my, um, in my plants and so I'll be using my liner brush for that. This is just a cheap one from Master's Touch from Hobby Lobby. And, but it's a nice, it's a nice length and it's got just the right kind of, I'm used to using it, so it's perfect for me. Okay, so let's get busy here. We're going to, I've got several different greens here. I have Azo Green, I have Green Appetite Genuine, Olive Green. I'm just gonna go in and hit all those three different colors and kind of put it on my brush and kind of let it mix on its own instead of mixing it on a pan. Because I want to go straight in pigment here because we need, we need pigment like that for what we're doing. Okay, we also have to keep in mind when we're not putting tape down on our paper that when we go to frame, we got to keep that in mind. And using a large sheet of paper allows your body to Get in and create those, those sweeping motions with your arm. And like this one's showing a lot of texture. There's a couple green sprinkles in there. 
Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush. And now I'm gonna go in and we're gonna make, delphiniums come in different colors. They come in blues and purples and I've even seen them at Trader Joe's in white and, um, and but my favorite ones when you find them are more of the magenta. So I'm gonna be doing some magenta ones here. Um, as I, like I said, this one that I did, I put in the purple. I added a purple one. So just for, just for today, we're just going to do, we're just going to do, um, uh, some probably right now I'm thinking we'll just do the magenta ones. Okay. So now I'm going to kind of start. I'm gonna make a triangle of brush marks. So if I get quiet, sorry, I have to kind of think through what I'm doing here. Okay, right. this is pigment from the tube, straight from the tube. Okay, now I'm using the Dr. PH Martin Bleed Proof White, which is the key ingredient to this, but you have to do this while those pigments wet. Clean my brush constantly. If you're stingy about your products, this is gonna be one that you're gonna have to let go of that if you want this effect. I don't hold back on my products. I use, I like to use them in high levels, thicker consistencies. Now look, I just created a mess there, but that's okay. Just let it do its thing. That'll make it just more interesting. Okay, so there is flowers on the stock. Now we're gonna just clean our brush really well. I'm kind of offloading. Um, can you see that? I'm just kind of cleaning my brush and offloading, dragging that brush right along the edge, offloading the water and going in and grabbing some greens just kind of running into three different greens and don't want too much so it makes a glob. But I'm kind of, if, if this is a center, you gotta stay within the center. And there's usually some little heads up at the top. And because this is all wet, it's gonna kind of do its thing. Okay, and if this is looking really just gonna give you a for instance so that looks like that we don't want that that looks ridiculous right it's like not working go in with your tissue and just pick up some values and it helped it tremendously so go in and just adjust how you need to okay and if these need a little bit of values you know just go in and just touch some of those green areas just so they're not like screaming at you. Because we don't want straight, weird looking stalks. We're trying to do this really loose. Because if you got everything really loose and all of a sudden you got these straight stalks, it's gonna look ridiculous, okay? Now, we're gonna put another one in. Now we're gonna make sure that we're creating different heights, okay? This one, let me just, this one is way up here and then it drops down and then it comes down, okay? This one's lower. See how the, there's different, there's different heights on all that. So we wanna do that same thing. Okay, let's do another one.
grabbing a little water. And if things happen on your paper, it splashes around, let it happen. That's the watercolor saying, I want to have some control of what are you doing here? Embrace, embrace those eggs as good things. He's a fat one. He needs to go on a diet program. And you have to do this fast because this pigment has to be wet. Okay. Cleaning my brush really well, going in the dirty, then going into a little bit cleaner water, dragging that water off the edge, loading this up. This stuff is really runny for me. If you get it, it's like paste. Um, as you use it, it gets more and more watery. Don't dump that water out of your Dr. Page Martin either because that little bit of water in there helps. Otherwise it's gonna dry and you're gonna have like grain grains in it. Now, I don't have that happen to me because I always leave the water in there. It almost feels like two delphiniums are happening here. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so my big fat one turned into two. So I'm gonna go in, grab some greens, and okay, let's do another one. Grab some greens. Doing three different greens here. Can go in. Oops. Okay, go in with my tissue. Let's create some values there. Pick that up. Now it's blended in. Now let's go into our green so they don't look weird. If anything looks weird, just back it off a little bit so it's making sense. We want it to look like it's blending in. Okay. Now, since I made like an extra one here, they're the same height. So let's go in and I'm just gonna drop one down a little bit lower. Cleaning that really well. Going in to my white. Okay, so now we've got three delphiniums. We could probably still fit another one in here. Put one right there. I need it to be a little bit more open because I'm looking at the composition and these are really kind of tight together. I've lost a lot of white space. A lot of white here, a lot of white there. This is kind of reading as one, but it's two. Now I want to open up the space a little bit. So I'm going to keep that all in mind as I'm kind of creating my next, my next one.
Now clean that really well, drag that edge of that brush along the top, and now go into my white. There's that little bit of that green is kind of mixing and getting weird. It's getting... I'm going to go in with a little bit brighter pink. Drop. Get where that green is. It's looking, making it really kind of gray. That delphinium was giving me some little problems there. Okay, still feels off. Okay, so now I'm going to bring some of that really bright pink right here. It's popping up some of these uh, uh, intensity of color. Okay. Again, I kind of lost my stalks here. I'm not sure where they are. Here's this one. And here's this one. Now we can bring some wispies up here to the top. Bring that grass in. That might be... They're hanging out with the grass. I've got overkill. I'm not going to do too much. That looks ridiculous over here. Now I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do my line work that sets me apart from everybody else. And I encourage you guys to find something that sets you apart from everybody else.
I'm just going to do just a little bit here. And that's it for my delphiniums. Bye, you guys. Stay safe, stay well, and God bless.